I'm on a mission to inspire the world's children to become the inventors of our future. I'm an artist and designer, and I spend all of my time trying to think up inventive, innovative, surprising, funny, um, thought-provoking ideas, and then I turn those ideas into real things, and I show those things in exhibitions and galleries around the world. But if you'd met me when I was a, a schoolboy, you would never have believed that I would become the person I am today, doing what I do today, talking to you. I was, um, I was very um, shy and quiet, and I lacked a lot of self-confidence. Um, I remember the teacher asked me um, to give a talk, a three-minute talk to the class, and I was shaking with every word in the sentence. I remember that. Um, I was average academically. I got seven C grades out of the ten exams. Um, my dad, uh, and, I, and actually, I, I wasn't, I wasn't um, you wouldn't have thought I was uh, particularly creative more than any other child in the class. Um, and my dad uh, said, suggested that I get a job at Nissan, the local car manufacturer in Sunderland, in the northeast of England, where I'm from. But Oh, that was me. That, that's me there. <laughs> but um, I, uh, I quite liked painting at school. Um, and I was OK. I was OK. This was the best I could find. <laughs> and um, so I decided I wanted to go to art college to try that. So I did an art and design uh, foundation course at Sunderland University, um, where you try a bit of everything to find what you like. And on that course was a guy who was a teacher, and he was an artist, called Charlie Holmes. And Charlie Holmes, um, he showed me a book of inventions. Um, it was art, it was everyday objects, but with a clever twist to them. There was something imaginative to them. And he asked me, you know, and challenged me, could I come up with my own ideas? And I found that I could do it, and I really enjoyed doing it, and I've been doing it ever since. So I started to th so think of ideas and draw them down. For example, this is a dual-use coffin work desk, ideal for those who work hard all their lives and then die. <laughs> um, <clears throat> this is name GPS. For those who forget names in social situations, you are facing Tom, turn left to face Claire. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, so. So, um, more recently, some of the things I've done, um, I took inspiration from The Wizard of Oz and Dorothy and her ruby red slippers. And when she clicks her heels together, she gets taken back to Kansas. And I thought, given modern technology, could I do something similar? So I created um, the world's first pair of GPS shoes. So these are called No Place Like Home GPS shoes. You plot on a map where you want to go in the world, um, click Upload to Shoes, um, the shoes know where you want to go. You click the heels together, there's a little switch at the back of the heels, and the GPS starts in the shoes. And the left shoe points in the direction of the destination, and the right shoe is a little progress bar that grows as you get closer to the destination. Um, <clears throat> um, Playfulness. I think playfulness is a vitally important method of finding ideas. You know, when we're all, we all get in this sort of tunnel vision and worried about um, is that impossible or we can't do that, having fun and, and thinking freely, I think, helps us be creative better than anything. Um, sometimes I have a completely bonkers, crazy, ridiculous idea. For example, I recently um, created the world's first art exhibition for dogs. Um, not about dogs, but for dogs. Imagine that in your mind, if you will. Um, it looks something like that. Um, so the dogs look at the, at the artwork. I created some um, objects, um, some installation sculptures. The dogs can jump into the, uh, the ball pit. Um, I also have created um, a stained glass driverless sleeper car of the future. Um, you get in the car, tell the car where you want to go, 
and the car would take you. This was my vision for the year 2059 when um, driverless cars will be super safe. Um, and there'll be no collisions, therefore car designers can simply create a living space on wheels. And so I pushed that idea to the limits of a bed covered in stained glass driving you where you want to go. Sometimes um, I get commissioned to do things, so Kellogg's asked me to make breakfast time more interesting and fun for children. So I thought about the crane game that we all know, and then I thought I'll make it a bit more interesting, make it wearable, um, <laughs> wearable technology is really big, now, you know, very popular, and then that um, ends up in something like this. <laughs> So, as I say, playfulness is very important, I believe. That's my approach to try and find ideas, as well as many others. But children, children if you think about who are, the, who are the largest group of creative people in the world, is it artists? Is it designers? No, it's children. And children have this ability to think um, to the far distances of their imagination. They're not restricted by the thoughts that we adults can have of, oh, that's impossible, oh, you can't do that, which narrow our train of thought. And creativity, is, it's, a, it's a way of thinking. Um, and children have got this ability. I decided to, um, to do a project called Inventors, where I asked 450 children back in my hometown, I, w I returned to Sunderland, um, and I asked 450 children to draw their own inventions. And then I asked local makers and manufacturers to make the best ideas into real things for an exhibition. So this was about, instead of just putting the child's idea on the fridge door and saying, that's a good idea, and then forgetting about it, I wanted to take children's ideas seriously. Um, so I collected, we collected um, 600 invention drawings. Um, I did 19 workshops um, of invention, and as you saw, I was showing my ideas, my, my uh, inventions to the children, and then just asking them, okay, come up with your own. And they could be completely crazy ideas, there was no limit. They could be practical and useful to make the world a better place, or they could be just bonkers and crazy in the size of a planet. There were no limits, that was important to me. Then I gathered together local makers and manufacturers, and they, um, they selected um, out of 60 that I have sort of narrowed down to the, the, to, to the most interesting ideas, the most creative, the most crazy, the most funny ideas. Um, they selected the ideas that they thought they would like to make. So then they selected um, children whose ideas we chose met with the manufacturers and the makers, and they visited the workshops and the factories. So the idea was to keep the child involved all the way through. It wasn't a case of just taking the idea and then making it. Ke keeping the child involved so they would describe their idea in more detail. So that was Kai, um, age 10, um, and he did a, a speedy tennis ball. You can adjust the speed of the tennis ball so you could play slow motion tennis or quick motion tennis. And so we, we made, um, a, a, the Fab Lab made this little prototype of that. And when Kai saw this um, invention the, in, in the exhibition, he was amazed. His, he saw that his imagination was made real. And I think this project really showed children that their ideas are important and can actually lead somewhere. They can affect the world and do things. Um, this was Oliver, who actually coincidentally went to my primary school in Sunderland. And he said when he does a good thing and he's on his own, he has no one to do a high five with. <laughs> so he invented a high five machine. <laughs> um, Fab Lab made this uh, high five machine, casting Oliver's hand in, in, in a 3D scan in it, and you press a button and it gives Oliver a high five. He was very, very happy about this. <laughs> it's encouraged him to do more good work, <laughs> I think. Um, now, children watch the news and they, uh, they start to absorb this information. So Charlotte, aged 11, um, came up with a war avoider. So for war zones, um, it would raise, the idea is it raises up your house out of the war zone onto a high platform on wheels in an invisibility blanket to take you away from the war. Um, 
so we, we created a, a model, Erin there, um, created this beautiful model of this idea um, for peace. Um, Sophia, age five, um, she created, a, 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 she drew an idea for an umbrella for ladybirds, which I thought was most <laughs> brilliant. It was the most brilliant idea. And, um, and Norman came out of retirement after 50 years working in glassmaking, and he made this umbrella right in front of Sophia, and, and she was watching there with her safety glasses on, and um, she was totally absorbed in seeing her idea made real. Um, Wendy here um, had an idea for a, a family scooter. Um, <laughs> I mean, why not? Um, so that, that's Wendy at, the, at AMAP, who were an advanced automotive uh, research company. So I thought that was funny that they were going to do the family scooter. Um, and that one turned out there. <laughs> <laughs> so we copy the colours of the drawing. We try to keep you know, everything as close to the child's drawing as possible. Um, <clears throat> Then we had an exhibition, so, so I, there was an empty shop on the high street, and I took over it um, and, and put, put some graphics on the front. And um, inside, all of the drawings are on the wall, and the objects are, are, are on the, the plinth. Now, we wanted the exhibition to be, you know, as good or better than adult exhibitions, because it's all about treating children's ideas seriously. Um, so a thousand people came to the exhibition over two weeks, and many people who came had never been to an art or design exhibition, so it really drew in people. Um, I think what was, what was, what were, there were many things that were great that came out of it, but we, you know, we, we allowed the children to, to express their imaginations to the far reaches of it. And in schools, they, this, there are good schools, but there's a tendency to, make children more serious and like us, a bit boring. Um, but, but yeah, so, so they really enjoyed that. Um, to, to help children try to find a passion. We all know if we can find a passion really early, that can transform our lives, just like it happened to me with Charlie Holmes. And, um, and also to, to, to show that creativity is, is a vital part of education in schools. Sometimes I think it can, it's, it's getting a bit lost or the focus is moving away, but creativity can be at the hub of every subject in schools. It connects things and creativity transforms lives. So it, it, it happened to me. And, and, and a few months after this exhibition, I got awarded an honorary doctorate at Sunderland University for art and design. And I thought, I've really got to find Charlie Holmes, who was like my Yoda. Um, like my, he, he inspired me as a young man. I got to find him, I tried to find him, but that was the only photo I, I could find on the internet. And I asked around and I emailed, and then I got a message from Charlie, and he came to the... Um, he came. <laughs> he came. <clears throat> And um, during the workshop, I had an audio recorder on me at, uh, permanently to, in the hope that, you know, children were to try and capture the children's ideas. Sometimes they'll say ideas quicker than they'll write it. And a little girl tapped me on the knee and she said, uh, now, now, that, now that I know how fun it is to invent, I'm now to be an inventor when I grow up. Oh, that's wonderful. I want to be an inventor when I grow up. She wants to be an inventor when she grows up, and I thought, wow. <laughs> so, I, so, you know, the world has got so many problems and challenges. We all know them, and people have got so many problems and challenges. We need a lot more creative, innovative thinkers in this world. So, I'm very happy to, to say that due to the success of that project, we're now launching it as a worldwide organization to take it to the rest of, of the world, to, to here in Austria. And um, so if you, know, if you have children, if you know children, if you know schools, if you know organizations, if you know governments, please point them to little inventors. And together, 
we will inspire children to become the inventors of our future.